int roots, how to simplify int roots with multiple terms, just with numbers. What are they? Int roots are roots of a radical and when multiplied n times gives the original value. Why? Helps to understand compound interest. Interesting fact, reindeer eyeballs turn blue in winter to help them see at lower light levels. Now let's take a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example 1. Now, let's read the steps. Step 1. What is the nth root or index? Step 2. Find the prime factorization. Step 3. Rewrite the number with the power. Step 4. Do the power and the nth root match? Now, let's read the question. Simplify the expression. The fifth root of 8 times the fifth root of 4. First, let's write down the fifth root of 8 times the fifth root of 4. We could multiply the 8 and the 4 since they have the same index, but since we're simplifying, we want to keep the numbers small. Now, let's find the prime factorization of 8 and 4. Let's start with 8. Since 8 is even, let's divide 8 by 2, which is 4. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. Since 2 is a prime number, we can stop. Now, we can write down the prime factorization of 8. What do we think that is? That's correct. 2 times 2 times 2. Let's go ahead and add those exponents since we had the same base and 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So the prime factorization of 8 is also 2 cubed. Now let's find the prime factorization of 4. What do we think that is? That's correct. It is 2 squared. Now let's show you why. Since 4 is even, let's divide 4 by 2, which is 2. Once again, since 2 is a prime number, we can stop. Now we can write down the prime factorization of 4. What do we think that is? That's correct. 2 times 2. Let's go ahead and add those exponents since we have the same base. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So the prime factorization of 4 is also 2 squared. Now, let's rearrange 8 and 4 as 2 cubed and 2 squared. So now we have the fifth root of 2 cubed times the fifth root of 2 squared. Using properties of roots, we can combine them since both have the same index. Now we can add the exponents since both have the same base. And 3 plus 2 is 5. What do we think is the next step? That's correct. We can cancel the power and the index since both are the same and only the 2 remains. That is example 1. Before we move on to example 2, let's see what happens if we multiply the numbers 8 and 4 at the start. Well, we would have to find the fifth root of 32. So we still get the same result and with more or less the same steps. So you can choose what method you prefer. Let's move on to example 2. Now, let's read the question. Simplify the expression the fourth root of 343 times the quantity of 3 times the fourth root of 7. First, let's write down the fourth root of 343 times 3 times the fourth root of 7. We could multiply the 343 and the 7 since they have the same index, but we don't want to do that because that will be a big number. And since we're simplifying, we want to keep the number small. Now, Let's find the prime factorization of 343 and 7. Luckily for us, 7 is already a prime number, so we only have to find the prime factorization of 343. 343 is a weird number. It is only divisible by 7. It might be useful to memorize that. So let's divide 343 by 7, and the result is 49. Let's divide 49 by 7, which is 7. Now, we can write down the prime factorization of 343. What do we think that is? That's correct. 7 times 7 times 7. Let's go ahead and add these exponents since we have the same base. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So the prime factorization of 343 is also 7 cubed. Now, let's rearrange 343 and put the roots closer together. So now we have 3 times the 4th root of 7 cubed times the 4th root of 7 to the 1st. Using properties of roots, we can combine them 
since both have the same index. Now, we can add the exponents, since both have the same base. And 3 plus 1 is 4. What do we think is the next step? That's correct. We can cancel the power and the index, since both are the same, and only the 7 remains. So now we have 3 times 7, which is 21. That is example 2. This time, we're not going to show you what would happen if we multiply 343 and 7, because that would be a big number, and nobody has time for that. Let's move on to example 3. Now, let's read the question. Simplify the expression, the negative of the cube root of 4 over the cube root of 5. First, let's write down negative 1 times the cube root of 4 over the cube root of 5. Now, let's find the prime factorization of 4 and 5. Luckily for us, 5 is already a prime number, and we already know the prime factorization of 4 from example 1, which is 2 squared. Now, let's rearrange 4 as 2 squared and 5 as 5 to the first. Since we have a root in the denominator, we have to rationalize it. How do we think we do that? That's correct. We look at the index, which is 3 in this case. In the denominator, we have 5 to the first. So we already have 1, and we need 2 more. So let's multiply the top and bottom by the key root of 5 squared. Now, let's combine the roots in the numerator and the denominator, since we have the same index. Let's square those numbers. So 2 squared is 4, and 5 squared is 25. This time, we do not need to rearrange 4, but use never know, and 4 times 25 is 100. So now we have negative 1 times the cube root of 100 over the cube root of 5 cubed. What do we think is the next step? That's correct. We can cancel the index and the power, since they are the same number, and only the 5 remains. Let's get rid of the extra symbols. So now we have the negative of the cube root of 100 over 5. That is example 3. Now it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question and I'll show you the result in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get it correct? Fantastic. If not, there's always tomorrow.